Okay, we're going to today start on what is probably one of the most critical and important things you're going to learn in circuits, and that is to learn how to do nodal analysis and mesh analysis. So we're going to begin in the background for what we need today. So nodal analysis and mesh analysis are two different analysis techniques. And the reason why we're going to learn these is because they are extremely efficient techniques for figuring out how to solve a circuit. We've already seen, for example, brute force where we go through, we write a KCL equation for every node, a KVL equation for every loop, define a variable for every element, unknown voltage and current variables, and as we've seen, it leads to a lot of variables, a lot of equations, a lot of the equations aren't even useful because they're redundant, they're dependent equations. So brute force works, but it's really not very efficient. The idea behind nodal analysis and mesh analysis is that both of these allow us to solve a circuit with the minimum number of equations and the minimum number of variables. So if you want to solve a circuit and have the fewest number of equations and the fewest number of variables you need, then these techniques will show you how. And the other nice thing about them as well is there are no dependent equations. So you will get just the correct equations that you need, just the sufficient number and no more. So these are really techniques you want to learn. And I want to emphasize that these techniques are basically algorithms. There's no particular insight or, you know, genius or creativity needed in order to learn these techniques. It basically comes down to practice. We can, we can program computers to do this kind of stuff, so computers are pretty dumb compared to people. So all you have to do is basically practice, get the technique down, if you learn these techniques, nodal analysis and mesh analysis, what you're going to find is the rest of the class will be a hundred times easier. If you don't learn these techniques now, you're going to struggle. So the quicker you master them, the better off you're going to be. So nodal and mesh, two different techniques. What's the difference between the two? Well, nodal analysis, as we're going to see, can be accomplished by doing nothing but KCL and Ohm's Law equations. Mesh analysis is nothing but KVL and Ohm's Law equations. As you're going to see, there's a lot of mathematical similarity between nodal and mesh analysis. You can consider them to be mathematical duels of each other in the sense that the forms of the equations can be very similar. We're going to first start with nodal and then we're going to learn mesh and once you learn nodal, mesh should hopefully click pretty quickly for you. So let's begin with a problem in nodal analysis and I'm going to start with in effect, the most basic way to do nodal analysis, and then I'm going to introduce some shortcuts to speed the, uh, to basically speed the analytical process up. So let's start with a problem. Here I've got a circuit composed of two current sources, 10 amp, 2 amps, and then a group of resistors, 1 ohms, 3 ohms, 2 ohms, and 10 ohms. 
And what I want to do is I want to be able to solve for all the voltages and currents in this circuit. Now I could do this by brute force if I wanted to, but we're going to start off with nodal analysis in order to see how easily and how elegantly we can solve a circuit like this. <clears throat> All right, now keep in mind I said that nodal analysis is KCL plus Ohm's law. But it seems like I'm kind of contradicting something I said to you guys before. Remember when we did our previous problems, we had to do Ohm's law, KVL, and KCL. Because as we saw before, KCL can only give you n minus 1 equations, assuming you have n nodes. So KCL by itself can't solve the problem for you. That's why we needed to include the KVL equations. So you wonder, why is it that we don't need it for nodal analysis? Well, because we're going to use a little mathematical trick. The idea behind nodal analysis is very simple. We can, if we've got a certain number of nodes, we can only write a certain, that number of nodes minus one KCL. One node will be left over. So let's take one node in this circuit and let's give it an arbitrary value. And the idea behind this is the ground or reference node. So I'm going to look at the circuit. I'm going to take one of the nodes and I am going to declare that to be the ground or the reference node. So in this case, if I look at this, I've got a node here. I've got a node here between these two resistors. I've got a node here connecting these three elements and I've got a node on the bottom which connects all of these elements together on the bottom. So I've got four nodes and I'm going to pick one of those nodes and I'm going to declare that it is the ground. And I'm going to draw this symbol. This is the ground or what you'll see is it's sometimes called the reference node. So we pick one of the nodes and you can actually pick any node in a circuit, but there are some that are better choices and we'll get into that. But I'm going to pick this node in the bottom and I'm going to say that's the ground node. And when I declare it to be the ground node, I also add that since it's the ground node, it has a node voltage of zero volts. So I'm arbitrarily declaring a value for that node. By doing so, I eliminate that node from my system of equations. And so now, KCL by itself can allow me to solve the circuit. So this really is the trick with nodal analysis. We have a little mathematical shortcut here where we pick a node and arbitrarily give it that ground designation. Okay, now, before we go any further and I start solving this, this kind of leads to a question. I call this a node voltage of zero. What do I mean by a node voltage? Because so far you've dealt with voltage rises and voltage drops. So before we start going any further into nodal analysis, we have to define exactly what a node voltage means, where it comes from, and how we can relate to that to what we've already seen in terms of voltages across elements. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw another diagram where I'm going to compare what we call node voltages with the voltage rises and drops you're already familiar with. So let's compare those two and I'm going to draw a simple circuit. And we're going to look at this circuit two different ways. 
We're going to look at it in the way you've already seen with the brute force analysis, and we're going to look at it in a different way in terms of the voltages. So let's say this is 10 volts for this source. This is 5 ohms. This is 1 ohm. This is 4 ohms for these resistors. Now, if you were to combine those resistors together, 5 plus 1 plus 4, you'd have 10 ohms. 10 volts divided by 10 ohms, you can very easily prove to yourself that there's going to be a 1 amp current flowing around that loop by Ohm's law. Pretty straightforward. And if you did that, you'd say, okay, what I've got here is, what's the voltage drop for each resistor? I've got 5 volts here, 1 amp times 5. I've got 1 volt across this resistor. I've got 4 volts across this resistor. And if I did my KVL and just started and went around the loop, I would say that 10 is equal to 5 plus 1 plus 4, and that's my KVL equation. KVL balances, so everything makes sense. So up to this point, this is how you thought of voltages, as things that were across elements. Now we're going to look at this circuit in a different way. I'm going to say, this node on the bottom, I'm going to declare that to be ground. And therefore, it has a node voltage of zero volts. That's arbitrary. When I choose it as ground, I say that has to be zero volts. Okay, now with this node voltage of zero volts, I'm going to go around this loop and I'm going to look at the node voltage here and the node voltage here and the node voltage here. Now watch what I do. That is zero. I'm now going to travel around the loop and go through a rise of 10 volts. Therefore, the node voltage here is zero plus 10 is equal to 10 volts. That is the node voltage at the top node. Now I've got 10 volts here, node voltage. I travel this way and I pass through this resistor that has a drop of 5 volts. Well, in that case, 10 minus 5 is equal to 5 volts. And in fact, that is the node voltage at this node, 5 volts. Now from here, I keep going. I travel through another drop. 5 minus 1 is equal to 4 volts. So 5 minus 1, I've got a node voltage of 4 volts. And now here, I travel from here all the way back to ground. 4 minus 4 is equal to 0 volts. And in fact, that was my starting voltage. I've traveled around and I've come back to the ground node. So these are the node voltages. Node voltages are referenced with respect to ground. So that's why this is called the reference node. So wherever I pick ground to be, all of the node voltages must be referenced against that ground. All right? So I just want to point something out. What if that was not the ground? What if instead I said the top node was ground? In that case, this would be 0 volts travel around this way, this would be minus 5 volts. 
this would be minus 6 volts, this would be minus 10 volts, and then 10 added to 10 would be equal to 0. And so if I put the ground at the top, I could travel around and I would have a different set of node voltages because I've now changed the ground. So the value of a node voltage depends on where you place the ground. But at the same time, where you place the ground doesn't change the solution to the circuit. You can still solve the circuit no matter where the ground is picked. So we're going to use this idea of the ground with the node voltages and then we're going to apply that to this circuit in order to solve it. Now one other thing I want to point out is that there is a very clear relationship between the voltage across an element and the node voltages. So let's go back to our ground on the bottom just so there's no confusion here. And let's use the node voltages in blue that I'd specified before. So 0, 10, 5, and 4. Okay, once you've established the node voltages, then there is a relationship between the node voltages and the voltages across the element. So for example, if I've got an element and I have got a node voltage VA on one side and VB on the other side, where VA and VB are node voltages. And I specify a voltage drop, V drop, across that element. What's the relationship between the two? V drop will be equal to VA the positive end minus VB on the negative end. And there you have the relationship. So let's look at this example here we were looking at a minute ago. All right. What is the voltage drop across the five volt across the five ohm resistor? Five volts. Five volts is ten minus five. One volt is five minus four. The positive end minus the negative end. Four volts is four minus zero. Ten volts is ten minus zero. So the drop also exists across that voltage source. So here we have a way of going through and relating everything to that ground node and relating everything in terms of voltage drops and node voltages. So you can always establish that relationship. Now as we work more nodal analysis problems this whole idea of node voltages will become completely second nature. But the first thing you've always got to do before you start working a problem with nodal analysis is you got to pick the ground. You've got to pick a ground, you've got to specify where that ground is because that's always going to be the starting point in your problem. Okay, so now that we've seen what node voltages are all about, let's go back to this problem next. And in our next module, we're going to do what we call basic nodal analysis, which is the most simple form of nodal analysis. It also requires the most number of equations but it's also the most straightforward and easy way to understand how nodal analysis works. So we'll begin with that and then we'll look at adding some shortcuts.